I'm doing is legal. This is why I believe I'll receive justice in the Howard Court. More to right, right center than the left. Oh, it is gone! He did it! He did it! It doesn't matter what your background is and where you come from. If you have dreams and you have goals, and that's all that really matters. lot to Charlie. The freedom of expression that the entire world could see. The entire world could see. When you black, it's not a movement. It's a lifestyle. This is who we are. You become kind of an ambassador now, kind of a motivational speaker. Every time I hear you talk, you talk to the kids, you talk about how important it is to follow their dreams. Uh, why is that something that's important to you? Honestly, it's so important because you can't really do big things if you don't have a goal or a dream, and that dream kind of drives you. So I think it's important to have something to reach for because uh, um, if you don't, then there's no other motivation. To have such a sense of purpose at such a young age is what makes Coco Golf unique. As a child, she was a natural at any sport she set her mind to. Basketball, track, gymnastics, the list goes on. But when a young Coco turned on the television in 2009 and watched as Serena Williams won her fourth Australian Open, she became inspired into a life of tennis. In her fledgling years, golf demonstrated the makings of hero Serena, aggressive, athletic, a true competitor. And by the time she was 14 years old, she made 2018 the year to become the number one junior in the world. The following year, while training in Florida, Goff was granted a wild card to play at Wimbledon, just five days before the prestigious tournament began. The American seized the moment and quickly flew across the Atlantic to make her debut Grand Slam appearance. And she shocked the sporting world, beating her other idol, Serena's older sister Venus, in the opening round. Goff's physical strength and self-belief exemplified her fighting spirit as she made it through to the fourth round. Wowing audiences with her come from behind win against unseated Slovenian Polana Herzog. It's just so mature to, to have that ability to come back and just hold a nerve was just, she's, uh, she's number one in the making, no question. A star was born, but so was an athlete prepared to use her newfound status for change within the black community. In 2020, Goff participated in just one of thousands of Black Lives Matter demonstrations taking place within America, a mid widespread protest sparked by the death of 46-year-old black man George Floyd in Minneapolis. It's the same path her grandmother took, a protagonist during the 1960s civil rights movement. Both women beacons for change, and both in it for the long haul. My name is Coco, and who just spoke was my grandma. protesting the same thing that she did 50 plus years ago.
Coco Golf was born into a sporting family. Her father, and now tennis coach Corey, played college basketball at Georgia State. And her mother, and now her home teacher Candy, was a college track and field athlete at Florida State University. Together, they've supported Coco through her tennis odyssey. And Candy wasn't surprised when she defeated Venus Williams at Wimbledon in 2019. Were you surprised she won? Um, actually, no. I'm very proud. Um, as a mom, um, one of your things that you do, you put all your efforts into your children to make sure that they're successful and to see the reaction and emotions on your child's face is, 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 is great to see. And after bowing out in the round of 16 to Romanian Simona Hellop, Golf received a hero's welcome when she returned to her hometown in Delray Beach, Florida. Coco, this has been a magical ride for you the last couple months. Have you gotten a chance to sit down and take it all in? Uh, yeah, this past week I've definitely been resting and practicing. Um, the city of Delray has been so supportive of me, so I'm super honored that everyone came out here to support me. you got Palm Beach County listening to you right now. You've got other counties up north listening to you on the Treasure Coast. Look into that camera right there and tell them what Coco Golf is all about next coming up. Uh, Coco Golf is a fighter. She's strong and she really likes to dream big and she wants she's living proof that anything is possible. Golf wildcarded into the 2019 U.S. Open and continued her Grand Slam success, making it to the third round, only to be defeated by world number one Naomi Osaka. Later that year, Golf proved she knew how to win securing her first WTA singles title at the 2019 Linz Open in Austria, still aged just 15. To conjure up such a win at such a young age was pure magic. And when Coco arrived in Melbourne for the Australian Open in 2020, it would be her first Grand Slam as a ranked player. I'm really excited. Um, this is my first slam getting a main draw without a wild card in general. So I'm really excited for this week. And um, I haven't been back in Melbourne since I was 13. So I was really happy to come. And I enjoyed it here when I played junior. So I'm excited to be able to play on the big stage. Father Corey once told Coco she had the power to change the world with her tennis racket. And at Melbourne that year, prior to the Open, she demonstrated her benevolent side in Tennis Australia's Rally for Relief, a charity match staged to support people affected by devastating bushfires sweeping Australia. In a thrilling night, golf along with Serena Williams, Caroline Wozniacki, Naomi Osaka, and Petra Kvitova helped raise just under $5 million but there was still a grand slam to come. And as fate would have it, Goff would be drawn to play Venus Williams in the Australian Open's very first round, with Goff again beating Venus in straight sets, 7-6, 6-3. Six, the win proved that Wimbledon the previous year was no stroke of luck. She has a personal idea of, of, a, of a champion, quite clearly. Uh, is she ready? Yes, I think she's quite ready, so it can happen any time. 2021 laid bare what an emerging talent Coco Golf is. She made it to the fourth round of the Australian Open, falling to fifth seed Elena Svitolina and then won her second WTA title at the Emilia Romagna Open in Parma, Italy, to become the youngest American to rise into the top 25 in 23 years. And that will do it. All smiles. Coco Goff, the champion in Parma. But it was in 2022 
and her rise on the red clay of Roland Garros to reach the French Open final that truly announced golf. Becoming the youngest woman to reach a Grand Slam final in 18 years and the first black woman to reach the ultimate round since Serena Williams at the 2019 U.S. Open. On January 30, 2009, Melbourne, Australia was five days into a sweltering heat wave, one of the worst in the country's history. Back home at the golf residence in chilly Atlanta, Georgia, a young Coco sat glued to her television watching Serena Williams burn up Rod Laver Arena to win the 10th Grand Slam of her career. Coco's father, Corey, sat in amazement, telling Coco she just witnessed the GOAT, the greatest of all time, to which an impressionable Coco turned and responded, I want to be the GOAT. It was a bold declaration, but Corey knew his daughter could achieve anything as long as she put her mind to it. Thirteen years on, Coco Goff is not only an outstanding tennis player, but she's also a deep-thinking teenager. After the tragic death of George Floyd in Minneapolis, the two-time WTA Tour winner used her platform, her profile, and that fighting spirit to bring attention to the Black Lives Matter movement. This, that we must first love each other no matter what. We must have the tough conversations with my friends. I've been spending all week having tough conversations trying to educate my non-black friends on how they can help the movement. Second, we need to take action. And yes, we're all here protesting and I'm not of age to vote, but it's in your hands to vote for my future, for my brother's future, and for your future. So that's one way to make change. your voice. No matter how big or small your platform is, you need to use your voice. I saw a Dr. King quote that said, the silence of the good people is worse than the brutality of the bad people. Woo! So you need to not be silent, because if you are choosing silence, you are choosing the side of the oppressor. So, so I heard many things this past week, and one of the things I heard is, well, it's not my problem. So this is what I have to tell you this. If you listen to black music, if you like black culture, if you have black friends, then this is your fight too. Fighting racism, discrimination, and inequality is a battle the Goff family have occupied the front line of since 1961. In a time of segregation and prejudice, Coco's maternal grandmother was the very first black child to be integrated into Delray Beach's local high school. It made history in Florida. And now, Coco Goff is committed to taking up the fight, swapping her racket for a microphone, and demanding change via the Black Lives Matter movement. When Hagler stepped into a ring, he looked like one of the most formidable men on the planet. He embodied the very essence of what would eventually become his legal name, Marvelous. Dominating the storied middleweight division from 1980 to 1987 to be considered one of the greatest prize fighters in any division in any era. As a child, he grew up fatherless in the principally black New Jersey borough of Newark until his tenement was burned down during the 1967 race riots. The family relocated 230 miles north to Brockton, Massachusetts, and it was here a young Marvin discovered his passion for the pugilistic arts.
a natural right-hander. But with the southpaw stance, he became middleweight amateur champion and immediately skipped the Olympics in preference for a payday and prestige, going undefeated in his first three years as a professional. His first title shot came in 1979 against Vito Antefermo at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. But it wasn't until he defeated Britain's Alan Minter in 1980 for the undisputed middleweight title that he first became a world champion. It was set up to be one of the most racially charged boxing events in history. After it was reported, Minter had said pre-fight, no black man is going to take my title. Naturally, Hagler was furious and entered the Wembley Arena in the best shape of his career. Stopping the Brit by technical knockout in round three landing a series of brutal punches, putting deep cuts under each eye of the Englishman. But elation for Hagler quickly turned into genuine terror. When the alcohol-fueled crowd, unable to accept what had just taken place, rioted, launching full beer cans and chairs into the ring with Hagler and his entourage forced to duck for cover. Going to the dressing room under police protection, they were swinging at us, going to the dressing room, and they were calling him all kinds of names regarding his color and foul language and throwing bottles. They hit me three times with bottles, and they uh, bounced a couple off my brother, I think two or three times, but we were covering Marvin and they were aiming at his head. They were saying, hit him, there he goes. It's scary to happen and the Americans ain't gonna wanna come over here and fight and, it, and it's bad, you know? And just think, not only that, just think if the Londoners or the British come to America and how would they feel if they got the same reaction? No stranger to adversity, Hagler would dominate the middleweight division for years to come. Marvin Hagler held a devastating knockout punch and a chin as solid as concrete. He made 12 successful defenses over five years, 11 by knockout, also picking up the IBF title along the way when he defeated Wilfred Sipion with a fourth round knockout in 1983. Hagler also held court as one of boxing's four kings, along with Sugar Ray Leonard, Thomas Hearns, and Roberto Duran. Did most of the runs he didn't present in the fight. In fact, out of the 13 opponents he beat to defend his title, only Duran in 1983 lasted the distance. The greatest display of Hagler's dark side was his 1985 knockout win over Tommy Hearns after three rounds of carnage, simply nicknamed the war. Amid the barbarics, Hagler also had swagger, which he still embodied in 2018. My hair okay? Yeah, okay. that's important. But Hagler's biggest rival came in the form of Leonard. The pair only fought once, with Sugar Ray taking a strategic 12 round battle in 1987 that Hagler believed had been stolen by the judges. Heartbroken, Hagler entered retirement on principle. But their careers tracked similar timelines, 
starting in the mid 70s with the pair circling each other but never committing to a match for a decade. But for all his ferocity, there was a very different yet equally marvelous side to Marvin. In 2007, he was named a member of the prestigious Laureus World Sports Academy. The Academy, in conjunction with the Laureus World Sports Awards and the Laureus Sports for Good Foundation, collectively work to change the lives of young people around the world through sport. It's helped tens of thousands overcome poverty, homelessness, war, violence, and drug abuse. Hagler applied the same commitment he'd showed in the ring to his role as ambassador. I think by having uh, so many athletes uh, that uh, live in legends, um, hoping to give something back to the, the younger generation, to any generation in a sense of uh, showing that they care and uh, being a, a spokesperson for Lars, is, uh, it's, it's a great responsibility and it's an honor. It took him all around the globe, where he worked with youth and rubbed shoulders with the elite to lift the cause's profile. I, I, I fear his counter punch. <laughs> I've been uh, following Mr. Mandela, the President Mandela, for a long time, and I'm uh, very proud and honored in uh, watching his achievements along the way. And uh, reading the book on his background, uh, it's a very exciting book, and uh, I plan on finishing it. <laughs> In 2018, at 63, and while attending the Laureus Awards, it was clear Hagler's love for the Foundation's work hadn't diminished. Our main goal is to continue to work for the kids and stuff and try to raise as much money as we can uh, to do different projects and whatever and to really help the needies, you know what I'm trying to say, and to give back something that's from all us athletes. You know, we're not getting paid. We're here to, to give ourselves to hoping that everything turns out a little better for the future. Over 14 years and 67 fights, Hagler was never knocked down. He took the long road to greatness, and on March 13th, 2021, that road came to an end when he passed away from natural causes at his home in New Hampshire. As a boxer, Marvin Hagler was one of the greatest of all time. And through his glorious work, he also did a mountain of good. For both, he's truly marvelous.